Hello everyone, this is a Geek Must Have and this is a post bag. And the first package comes from China and it says uh, cell phone handset, video adapter, and data extension cable. I think one of these is kind of a funny uh, item to have to uh, have some fun with people. Let's open it up and see. So then the first item is this headset. And it's a regular telephone looking like headset with a curly cord and a 3.5 millimeter plug on the end. It also has, I'm going to zoom in here for you. what appears to be a connect button, a hang the phone up button, and on the side it's got a volume up and down. It's made out of this funky plastic material. It's a very light weight, but still it would probably look kind of funny. When you use it with your phone by plugging it into the bottom here and then making a phone call. The initial test with this wasn't very promising. Uh, the connection on it seems to cut in and out and uh, the microphone on this is so sensitive that it actually picks up the speaker. So the microphone's picking up the speaker and you're getting this weird echo back on the person who's listening. Uh, and because the microphone is so sensitive, it picks up breathing noises and odd and end, odds and end noises that are going on in the background. It's just kind of odd. And uh, occasionally it just cuts completely in and out. Not necessarily the best idea, even as kind of like a gag thing. I think I have another one of these that I bought that was much better, but somebody dropped it and it fell apart. So we'll probably give this one another try and open it up and see what's inside. The next item are kind of a neat idea right here are these little adapters. And what they allow you to do is where you have a micro SD uh, socket on something. You plug this into the micro SD socket and then this end uses a full size SD card on a ribbon cable. So you have an SD card that's you know put, put away someplace kind of small to get to or difficult to get to. You plug this into that area here and then you put your SD, your micro SD card, and a regular SD adapter and plug it into this. Uh, kind of a neat idea. I saw this on Adafruit and decided to buy one. These were a little bit less expensive than the ones on Adafruit, Adafruit but they did take forever to get here. As long as you don't mind waiting, I guess that's okay. Uh, these will come in handy for a, a couple of projects where I have... Uh, music that's on a micro SD card and it's in an area that's very very difficult to get to. So these are uh, not bad at all. They're about eight and a half inches across or about 220 millimeters. Not bad. And the last item in that package are these 
HDMI gender benders. Also, I need you to uh, take two HDMI cables and plug them together to make one continuous cable or to turn a uh, male end into a female end. One unusual thing about these, these are high quality and on the spec sheet it says they're HDMI 1.4 compatible and all the way up to 1440p. Uh, notice how the orientation this way, the wide side is at the top and normally when you flip them around they're the same on the other side but when you flip this one around it's upside down. So I'm curious as to how they might have wired the inside of this because that makes it a lot more difficult. Uh, I bought these as stock replacements. Uh, I will see how they work against some of the other ones I've gotten. The next item I got came in an Amazon package, but it was an eBay purchase. I wonder how that works. Open it up and find out what's inside. A couple of things. Uh, I this first one here. This is an RII which stands for Real Internet Idea. It's a multifunction wireless keyboard with a mouse on it, I hope. Uh, I'll try to get it out. Nope. When all else fails, use a knife. Is a very small keyboard and it's made out of metal. It's got an on off switch. It's got a I'm zoom in a little bit for you here. It's got an on off switch and then it's got a charging cable. And it's got a little a little difficult to see, like a, a little lip here. It's probably where the battery is, but that'll make the keyboard stand up kind of a little more proud. And it comes with uh, a very funky cable. Ah, so the cable. One that has the standard USB-A, the other one's a micro USB to charge it, and then there's a female USB-A here so that you don't lose the port as a result of plugging this in to charge it. It's kind of neat. Well, I bought this particular keyboard because I have one of the machines in my lab that right now has a wired keyboard and a mouse and every time I need it I have to take the keyboard and the mouse off of the top of it and run it over to the desktop in order to use it and I'm getting a little sick of that and there's not a lot of room left on the desktop for me to work from so I need and it's only an occasional use computer so I'm thinking this would work really nice for an occasional use in the past I've used the Microsoft keyboards but even those Microsoft keyboards are kind of large Give you an idea. Here is the Microsoft keyboard. This is hooked up to my 50 inch monitor controlling a uh, Android TV box. And here's the small keyboard I just got to give you a size comparison. I have one of these in my instrument box because I like them so much. But uh, if this one works out, I'm probably going to replace this one in the instrument case. Now, 
Well, the keyboard has fairly nice feeling in it. It's a set of function keys along the top, and then the function keys all have a different meaning to them. There's the uh, Windows or on a Mac, the, the equivalent on a Mac key. Uh, there's an alternate graphics key, which I think are these here. Not really certain. Uh, page up and page down with the function key. So if you want a function button, if you want an F9, you have to press the blue function and then the F9. You just can't press it by itself. If you press it by itself, it's these multimedia commands. In this case, back and forth, cut and paste. Same thing with page up and page down and home and end. It's these. There's a set of right mouse button and left mouse button. And that's the trackpad. And then by tapping once with one finger, it's the left one. Tapping with two is the right one. Uh, the USB dongle for this is hidden in the back here. Open this up, and there's the dongle for it. So we're going to test this. Right now on the machine that's recording this video. Well, it recognized it. It says we are setting up the mini keyboard. Mini keyboard is set up and ready to go. Turn it on, and uh, a little difficult to see. Yeah, there we go. The actual button is right there. Ah, well, the touchpad works. It's fairly responsive. It's not uh, requires a couple swipes to go across the full keyboard because of the limited width that's here. Imagine you could make an adjustment in Windows to have it go a little bit faster if you wanted. And after a little bit of testing with this in one of my systems, I found out a few things. The keys are a little close together, and uh, the keys, because they've shrunk it all together, things like the Control, Alt, and Delete, it's the Control, Alt, and the Function key, and the Delete, which is up here, which is really an odd combination to do with your fingers. You have to do three fingers on this hand, so instead of it a three-finger salute, it's a four-finger salute on this. Plus key is a shift up over here. Using this for, um, kind of using this on a system where you're not doing a whole lot of work would be fine, but I can't see using this type of a keyboard long-term or heavy-duty use. So uh, if you're working with like a Raspberry Pi or you're working with a system like a terminal server someplace where you need to have a temporary keyboard, Carrying this around is an excellent alternative than long, lugging a full-size keyboard and a mouse with you, but only for occasional use. The next item in the shipment is this iFrog's tadpole. It, uh, it's a big sound mini speaker. It is a Bluetooth speaker on a carabiner. And it's in that packaging type that requires some severe cutting to get at it. So it comes with the speaker itself, hooked up to a carabiner switch and then a little charging cable standard USB A to a micro USB. I'll zoom in on this. There we go. So there it is. iFrogs. Charger plug on the side. Uh, it's Bluetooth. Uh, it's a Bluetooth 3 device. It doesn't weigh very much. Let's see if we can get it to actually play some music.
like it would be on most Bluetooth devices, usually when you push and hold down on the on button. And it should start flashing different colors. But it appears to be completely dead. Now, now I've got it plugged in, and by pushing down the button, it flashes back and forth. And we'll go to the phone. Hopefully, my battery won't die. And I look at my phone and go scan. Ah, there it is. iFrog's tadpole. Oh, it beeped to let me know. So now we'll go. Spotify. some piano music. Let's see if I can boost the volume up on it here. Now, if I play it too loud, the speaker will start uh, buzzing. Does seem to have. Let's pick something else that's a little heavier. Oh yeah, that'll tax it. You can hear it buzzing. <laughs> so that's a not. It's a not a bad little speaker. You can't crank the volume up too much on it, but you can click it onto a bag or in your backpack or you know, on whatever and play some music while you're walking around. Uh, I'm a big proponent of situational awareness, which is almost always a problem when people are walking around with uh, their earbuds plugged in listening to music while they're jogging. I just think this would be a little safer clip this onto your uh, your gym shorts or cl clipped it onto whatever you're jogging with. Uh, we'll see how long this takes to charge and we'll do a test on it and play it down until the battery goes completely dead and see how long it really goes. They claim two hours but you never know. And the next box is truly an Amazon box, and it's got a Bluetooth speaker in it. Now, I must have 30 Bluetooth speakers of all types and, types and sizes and shapes and whatever. Um, I remember ordering this one particularly because it had a couple things on it that were kind of unique that made this a a useful speaker. Um, it's supposed to be a 10 watt dual speaker, has a microphone in it and can be a hands-free sort of like a, uh, a conference phone or for your regular cell phone. So you can put this down and a number of people could talk to it so you could use it as a conference speaker. That was kind of a neat idea. I like the idea that it had a microphone in it and gave it value as a, as a conference speaker. So, open it up and take a look at it. Try to 
excited to get it in this gold color because of all the Bluetooth speakers I have. Gold is not one of the colors. And well, color isn't important. I figured I'd go a little wild on this one. So this is what it looks like. This is called a Zoe tree. In front of it, uh, the whole case is made out of, it feels like metal, but I bet it's plastic. It also comes with a set of cables, a standard USB-A to uh, micro, standard charger, and then a uh, auxiliary plug so that you can use this as an external speaker to something else. So you can use this as a uh, speaker to pump other things through through the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack on it. Um, it claims to have a 12 hour wired and 10 hours with Bluetooth uh, playtime. So if you're playing it through a Bluetooth connection, it's supposed to last for 12 hours. And if you're using the auxiliary jack in the back here, which I'll zoom into in a little bit, you're supposed to get uh, 12 hours. It takes three hours to charge the thing. You know, supposedly 33 feet distance on the Bluetooth, but uh, that's usually not the case. It's a uh, rechargeable 2 amp 3.7 volt battery on it. It does have quite a bit of heft to it. Uh, it has a uh, signal to noise ratio to them. According to them, it says like uh, 80 megabyte uh, or excuse me, 80 decibels. Uh, it has a uh, passive subwoofer inside to deliver outstanding bass. And if you use it with an iPhone, you can see the battery status on it. So. I'm zoom in on the back here so you can see some of the things in the back. <laughs> so we have uh, the microphone. Now I question how good of a microphone that would be for like a conference room speaker. That's a tiny little microphone. Here's one of the reasons why I bought this particular speaker is that you can plug a micro SD card into here with your recorded music on it, which I have a ton of other devices that use the micro USB and a standard SD where I just put the micro SD into an adapter card and plug it in. It has an auxiliary plug that goes in. You can also use a standard USB stick with your music on it. These two things in the auxiliary and the mic that's on here make this different from other uh, Bluetooth speaker sets that you see. Uh, on the top it's got uh, uh, the call for the disconnect, play, like answer the phone, hang up the phone, power, go to the next tune, go to the next, and probably volume controls. Well, let's try and sync this thing to my phone. I'm going to hook my phone up to a charger before it goes completely dead. little USB cable that came with the uh, unit it seems to be a piece of crap
after using this speaker a little bit more and playing with it, the voice on it is definitely Chinese. Not a problem, just going to take a little getting used to. So I recorded some music onto this 2 gigabyte micro SD card. And I'm going to stick it in the slot in the back here. Bluetooth mode, theory. Music mode. I gotta close the window before I record because New York don't know how to be quiet. No? Stand up. It's a, a positive click SD, so it clicks in the place so the card can't pop out accidentally. I like that. Test the base. I gotta close the. Well, it does appear as though. Bluetooth mode, Perry. I guess Perry means pairing. It is kind of funny the voice. Paired. <laughs> so, it's a very nice little unit. I'm going to assume the auxiliary plug actually works, and if I had a music source, I could plug an auxiliary source into there. So this is a very effective Bluetooth speaker with the ability of having a microphone to take phone calls and use as a conference call, uh, USB, SD card, auxiliary input. Uh, very nice styling to it as well. I'm pretty certain, yeah, this is plastic, but it does kind of metal-like feel to it. Not a bad little speaker. Well, let's see if we can turn it off. Power off. I think the idea that it has a uh, voice uh, response to things is also neat, regardless of what accent or type of voice it is. That's a fairly nice speaker. I'm impressed with that. This wraps up this post bag with Bluetooth speakers and some other goodies. Press the like button if the video was useful or entertaining. Subscribe to my channel because every subscriber I get makes me smile. I have a personal goal of 500 subscribers by the end of the year. Please be one of those subscribers. Leave me a comment with suggestions, requests, or even criticisms. I try to respond to any and all comments. I have a companion blog at geekmusthave.com where, where I ramble on about all things technical. Stop by and visit me. I'll leave my email in the description below if you want to send me a message. Thank you and have a good one.